So our topic today is confidence interval. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time in understanding what it is and also how do we calculate confidence interval. So this is our population. Okay. And for us, it's scores of the students, thousands of students. Now from this population, we're going to take samples and find the sample means. So when we fill these numbers, these numbers will be the sample means of the sample size we choose. And we're going to choose a couple of sample sizes. Let's go for it now. It's kind of fun. Okay. So what do we have now? Population fixed will not change. Now, mean of sample means 80.57, 80.664. Pretty close. Right. Now look at that. Standard deviational sample means is 2.025. Standard error 1.98. Again, pretty close to each other, like a difference of like a 0 0.04, 0 0.03. Very close to each other. So what has happened now? That standard deviation of the sample means has gone down. And naturally, we took a bigger sample. Look at the numbers here. Look at these numbers. 80, 79, 80, 82, 80, 81, 83, 83, 79, 81, 77, right? That's what these numbers are. So these numbers are very close to the population mean, which means the standard deviation of the sample means has gone down. And standard error, which represents this one, is also now 1.983. Okay? Now, keep in mind, we only take one sample. We don't take these many samples in real life. They're very expensive. We don't take one sample. This is the study of the sample means. That's what it is we are doing right now. We are not taking these many samples. That's impossible, literally impossible in real life. Now let's look at our distribution of the sample means. And now we only got from like a 70s to 80s and very small ones, few here and there, but typically we got mostly in this range here. So what we have seen is that if the sample size gets big, then the standard deviation of the sample means goes down that also means standard error sample mean goes down. This is what exactly? This is actually 11.9 divided by 6. Why 6? Our sample size was 36. Square root of 36 is 6. So 11.9 over 6 is what we're going to get here. Again, we'll go back to the slides and we'll discuss more, in, more on it. If I take a sample size of 100, what happens then? Well, this will become really small. 11.9 divided by 10 is 1.19. So we expect something like a one point two range here. Okay. And this will be pretty much 80s in this neighborhood. But let's take a sample size 100. I mean, it's program is there. How does it matter to us? Just to see 100. And now what we see is 1.17 and 1.19. That's 11.9 over 10. 1.17. They're pretty close to each other. 80.6, 80.664. And now these ones are much, much tighter now than what we had before. Okay, look at the range here now. 78, 79 to barely we have anything here. Okay. So let's go back to our PowerPoint now. So what we saw was this one. The mean of the sample means was very close to the population mean, mu. And the standard deviation of the sample means was very close to standard error of the sample means. This one, 11.9 over 6, if sample size is 36, of 10, if it's 11.9 over 10, if it's a 100 sample size. So let's move on now. So since we have a normal distribution, so we, this is what we'll be doing here. So let's, let's understand what this picture is. We're choosing 95% confidence interval, which means we got 2.5% here and 2.5% here. If you look in a z-score table or Excel, you find z-score to be 1.96. That means that's 1.96 and 1.96. So this will be x bar, again from normal distribution that you should know. This will be x bar plus z sigma x bar x bar minus z sigma x bar. 
What is Z? Z is 1.96. Okay. And sigma x bar 1.98. So whatever x bar we get, we'll have an interval that will be x bar plus minus z sigma x bar. And this is called margin of error. So this is z sigma x bar from there to the z sigma x bar and z sigma x bar. So that's margin of error, which is in our case 1.96 times sigma x bar, which is 1.98. So 3.88. So whatever sample mean we get, our 95% confidence interval will be sample mean plus minus 3.88. If we get a sample mean of 60, 60 plus minus 3.88. If we get sample mean of 90, 90 plus minus 3.88. So you know how critical it is to get a good sample mean. So our basically we're trying to say is this, that 95% of the sample means will be in this range, which means we also use the logic to say that population mean is going to lie between these two numbers somewhere. And we are 95% confident. So that's what we have confidence interval. The interval will be x bar plus minus 3.88. And we are 95% confident that it is the mean lies in this range. So when you say I took a sample of 36, well, you're actually picking up a number from this table now. Because every possible sample you can think of, the mean is already here. So we can think now. So we're picking up a number from here, which means we're taking a sample of size 36. Let's suppose you took the sample and the sample mean happens to be 76, which exists here. There's a 76 here, right? We've got 76. So to you, the population mean is 76 plus minus 3.88. Remember, now this is 76. So you're going to say, I'm 95% confident that the population mean lies between this number and that number. And guess what? It is 80.664. We know that because we did calculations, which means you are wrong. You missed it. So good, 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 good. Now suppose you get up, end up getting an 85. There's 85 here somewhere. Okay, there's 85 here. When you get 85, your lower cutoff is 81.113. Once again, that's the lower cutoff. Upper cutoff is 80.887. So you're going to say, I'm 95% confident that the population mean lies between these two numbers. But actually, it is 80.664, which means you missed the boat again. Scenarios. Different scenarios. So I have two populations here. Population 1, population 2. Here's a population 1 and here's a population 2. Which of the two will require a wider confidence interval? Can you guess? Well, let's see. In this case, the mean is 80.13 and sigma is 2.03. Tightly packed. In this case, mean is 80.61. Pretty much same means. But sigma is 11.43 about five, six times more than this one, right? So which will give you a tighter interval? Obviously this one, because it doesn't matter what you get, you only get number will be in the 70, upper 70s to lower 80s, there's nothing else. In this case, you may get a sample mean of 73, you may get a sample mean of 83, depending on what sample size you choose. But here, you will not get that because they're very tightly packed. So the conclusion is, if the population standard division is small, you, you will get a tighter interval and your margin of error will be small. Now, assuming everything else is constant, right? Same sample size, same everything else. Relationship between sample size and confidence interval. If my sample size is small, well, intuitively you can say if you only ask two people, you have to give a wider interval to be 90% confident, right? Because you only got two people. If you ask 100 people, we can give a tighter. So n, sample size n. Mathematically, n is at the bottom here. Which means if I take a sample of 5 from here versus 50 from here, 
For 5, I'll get a wider interval because sigma x bar is large. This over squared of 5 is small. Where if I'd get a 50, it will be smaller. Relationship between confidence level and confidence interval. What's that? Well, level is like I'm 90% confident. I'm 95% confident. I'm 20% confident. Interval A is this one. X bar plus minus E sigma X bar. Okay. So, if your level is 20%, what's the Z score? Z score will be small. 20% is right here. That's 10%, 10%. A very small z-score. If you are looking at the 95%, it's a bigger z-score. If you look at 99%, even bigger z-score. So you want the smallest possible interval and largest possible confidence. So this pretty much is all there is really. The, the idea, the basics of confidence interval, that's all there is. Now we could think of proportion. I could just make it suppose uh, in a warehouse, uh, we don't know how many parts are defective. You take a sample of 60 parts. In that 60 parts, 20% are defective. So once again, 20% plus minus something, Z sigma P hat. You could think of variance. So once you understand the concept behind confidence interval, then everything else falls in nicely. And this is pretty much all I wanted to say today in this video about confidence interval.